In this video, we're gonna take a look at a solution to question number three from the 2022 AP Statistics FRQ exam. We're gonna fully explain it. It's a question that deals with the normal model and binomial model as well. So let's just dive right into it. It's a great question. All right, so a machine at a manufacturing company's program to fill shampoo bottles such that the amount of shampoo in each bottle is normally distributed. Gosh, we love when something's normally distributed because it means we could use the normal model, which makes our lives so much easier in terms of calculating probability. But anyway, it has a mean of 0.6 liters. So I'm actually going to write that down. So the mean is 0 0.60 liters and a standard deviation of 0 0.04 liters. Okay, let the random variable A represent the amount of shampoo in liters that is inserted into a bottle by the filling machine. Now, a random variable is a variable where we don't quite know the outcome. We know that there's supposed to be 0.6 liters in each bottle, but some bottles might get a little bit more, some bottles might, might get a little bit less. Now, we know that this follows a normal distribution, which is awesome, because that tells us that smack dab in the middle, what's most likely to occur is 0.6 liters, but it could be 0.64, could be 0.68, or it could even be as high as 0.72. Very unlikely, though could go down to 0.56, again, I'm just subtracting 0.04, down to 0.52, and down to 0.48 as well. Pretty simple math there, nothing too complicated. Okay, question A says, a bottle is considered to be underfilled if it has less than 0.5 liters of shampoo. So 0.5 is gonna be somewhere right around here, and anything below that is going to be considered an underfilled bottle that the company might wanna throw away or discard or, or get rid of because if somebody gets an underfilled bottle, they might be kind of upset. So it wants us to actually find the probability of getting a randomly selected bottle that is underfilled. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually notate everything we're gonna do here. This is what a requirement of the AP stats exam. So we're gonna find the probability that the random variable A, the amount of shampoo in the bottle, is less than 0.50 liters. If we get a bottle less than 0.50 liters, we are considered underfilled and we wanna find the probability of that. So this is what it takes to be underfilled and we're trying to find the probability uh, of that occurring. Okay, let's keep going here. Now the problem is our calculator that's actually gonna get us this answer does not quite understand um, 0.5 liters, so we need to find the z-score. And it's actually pretty obvious to see there what the z-score is, but we're gonna calculate it anyway. How do you find a z-score? Take the value in question, subtract the mean, divide by the standard deviation. And if you do all the math on this, uh, I'm gonna grab my calculator just to show you doing this real quick, even though it's pretty simple math. 0.5 minus 0.5. 6 divided by, whoop, I almost made a very common mistake. At, make sure you hit enter first, got to follow up one of operations, do that subtraction first, then divide by the 0.04. And, boy, a lot of typing there here. It's hard to use this. And I get negative 2.5. It should make sense if you look at the picture for it to be negative 2.5 standard deviations below, right? Here's negative 1, here's negative 2, here's negative 3. So, 0.5 would be right in between there as well. Okay, awesome. All right, so now we're gonna find the probability that a z-score is less than negative 2.5. And again, I have to do that because no calculator on earth can find the probability that a shampoo bottle is less than 0.5 liters, but it can find the z-score. So to do this on a TI-84 calculator, I'm gonna go ahead and grab normal CDF, which finds probabilities above, below, or in between z-scores. So I do wanna go below, so I'm gonna start at negative 99 as my lower value. And that is going to act as basically a negative infinity way to the left. And I'm gonna to go to an upper value of negative 2.5. That is my z-score that I just found. Now, if you don't use a TI-84 calculator, maybe you use a um, Z-table, which is common as well. A lot of teachers use Z-tables. And in that Z-table, you're gonna look up a Z-score of negative 2.5, and then you're gonna kind of cross those numbers and you'll get the probability of being below. And I'm getting 0 0.0062. So 0 0.0062 is the probability, and if you care, that'd be 0.62%. So very unlikely here, but that would be the probability that a randomly selected bottle is underfilled. Okay, easy, easy, easy. All right, moving on to part B. After the bottles are filled, they are placed in boxes of 10, 10 bottles per box. 
After the bottles are placed into the boxes, several boxes are placed in a crate for shipping to a beauty supply warehouse. The manufacturer's company's contract with the beauty supply warehouse states that one box will be randomly selected from a crate. If two or more bottles in that selected box are underfilled, the entire crate will be rejected and sent back to the manufacturing company and um, they're going to have a problem, right? They're going to be losing business because they're so angry here. So again, 10 bottles in a box, the process for kind of quality control, making sure that they're okay is they're going to select one box. If two or more, that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or all 10 bottles are underfilled, then they're going to send not just that box back, they're going to send them all back and maybe demand a refund. So the beauty supply warehouse manager is interested in the probability that a crate shipped to the warehouse will be rejected. Assume the amounts of shampoo in the bottles are independent of each other. All right, first part here, so there's two parts to this part. First part says, define the random variable of interest for the warehouse manager and state how the random variable is distributed. So first, I'm going to define this. I'm going to use a capital B. You can actually even just use a generic X if you want. But capital B is the number of underfilled bottles in a box of 10. So it's the number of underfilled bottles in a box of 10. How many of the 10 bottles in the box are underfilled? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Can't have 11 because there's only 10 in the box. All right, so that's the random variable, right? That's what's going to vary. Every box could vary in terms of how many bottles in that box out of 10 are underfilled. All right, now this is a, a binomial variable. It says, how is it distributed? So this is a binomial distribution. Now, how do I know that? Well, because A, I have 10 bottles. I have a given number of bottles that's in every box, and I have a probability of being underfilled that I calculated back in part A, 0 0.0062. That's the probability of a box being underfilled. And those are the two things you need for a binomial distribution. Now, you do need to make sure that the bottles are independent of each other. That is a big part of being binomial, and it did say that. The probability of a bottle being underfilled cannot change from box or from bottle to bottle. It's got to stay at the 0 .0062, and that should also be true. And um, every bottle is either A, underfilled, or B, not underfilled, right? So it's either good or bad, and that is going to be success or fail here. Okay. Pretty simple there. Hopefully that made sense. Now they want us to actually determine the probability that a crate will be rejected by the warehouse manager. All right, so now let's actually write this down. What is it going to take to be rejected if two or more bottles in the box are underfilled? So if capital B is greater than or equal to two, then I'm going to reject the, the entire crate and the manager is going to be all mad. So I have to find the probability that Capital B, the number of underfilled bottles in a box of 10, is greater than or equal to 2. So now that would mean I have to calculate 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6 or 7 or 8 or 9 or all 10 bottles being underfilled. I'd have to find all of those probabilities and add them together. But I don't want to do that because that sounds like it's going to take too much time. I'm going to actually go the route of doing what this doesn't say, right? So think about the options, right? The options for B are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, or 10 underfilled. I want to find the probability that two or more are underfilled. That's just a lot of work. So why don't we do the probability of not being underfilled, which is 0 or 1, which would actually be, I mean, not being rejected. So 0 or 1. So, But the problem is if you find what you don't want, when you're all done, you have to do one minus that because this in the entire probability distribution for what could happen, how many bottles are underfilled is 100%. It's either going to be one of these 11 options, 0 through 10. I'm finding what I don't want to occur, and that is 0 underfilled or 1 underfilled. So if I find that, 
I'm going to have to do 1 minus that result to get what I'm looking for. So I'm going to do 1 minus, okay, now I'm going to do the binomial distribution here. So that's going to be 10, 0 are underfilled. That's 0 0.0062 to the 0, none underfilled, 0.9938 to the 10th. Multiply multiplication sign in there. So I want zero underfilled. The probability of being underfilled is 0 0.0062. And I need all 10 to be filled over 0.5 and totally normal, right? Okay. Or what about 10 choose one underfilled? That'd be 0 0.0062 to the first times 0 0.9938 to the ninth. If one is underfilled, the other nine are not underfilled. So what I'm doing here is I'm finding the probability of zero underfilled boxes or underfilled bottles out of 10 or one underfilled bottle. This is not what's going to reject, right? This is actually what's going to make the company accept the shipment. This is going to be a good thing. But the question didn't want me to find that. The question wanted me to find getting rejected, which is two or more. I'm going to do the opposite because it's just less work. So I'm going to do one minus this. All right, now how do I get these answers on my calculator? I'm actually going to show you a couple different things you could do here. First, let's start with zero. So I could do 10, and then I got to do math, slide over to probability, and then I'm going to go down to the NCR. This is actually going to tell me how many different options there are for 10 choose zero. There's only one, which actually should make sense. I want all of them to be not underfilled, <laughs> which is meaning they're okay. So there should be only one way that that happens. So I'm going to take that one multiplied by 0 0.0062 raised to the zero. I want none of those underfilled bottles. And then 0 0.9938 raised to the 10. So there is the probability for zero underfilled bottles. And now I have to do one underfilled bottle. So that's going to be 10 uh, math. Slide over to probability here, go down to the NCR, choose one. So 10 choose one, it means this is, there's 10 different ways that one bottle could be underfilled. I'm going to take that 10, I'm going to multiply it by 0 0.0062 raised to the first, because I need one of those underfilled bottles, times 0.9938 raised to the ninth, because that means the other nine bottles are not underfilled. Okay. Probability for that. Now I'm going to take those previous two answers and add them together. And this is the probability of zero or one underfilled bottle, but I'm looking for two or more. So I'm going to do one minus that result to get 0.99 uh, or one minus 0.998, which would give me an answer of 0.00167. Whew, okay, that was a lot of work. Now, let me just show you a couple other ways you can do this on your calculator. We do have this cool feature on our calculator if we had second VARs. We actually have a binomial distribution on our calculator. And if I choose binomial CDF, uh, 10 bottles, probability of underfilled, 0 0.0062. And if I type in a 1 right here, because I'm doing a binomial CDF, it's going to calculate the probability of 1 or less. So that would be one or zero. So it's going to do both one and zero together. So this is just a faster way that the calculator could do all that math to get the 0.998. And then I'm going to do one minus that. Again, because that's the probability of getting one or zero, I want the probability of two or more. So again, I still get to that 0 0.00167. So either way you get it, we need to get that answer 0.00167. But this is what would be the shortest way to show your work. Um, you could show the work for 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, but most kids aren't going to do that. Now, here is the previous um, two-part answers, nice and typed up, a little bit cleaner than how I was writing. I know my writing can get a little bit messy. But you'll see over here, we will find the probability that the number of bottles that are underfilled is greater than or equal to 2. Our route for doing that was doing the probability that there was less than 1 or equal to 1. That's 1 or 0. And I had to do one minus that answer to actually get the value I was looking for. All right. Last part here. To reduce the number of crates rejected by the beauty company supply, uh, the beauty supply warehouse manager, the manufacturing company is considering adjusting the programming of the filling machine so the amount of shampoo in each bottle is normally distributed with a mean of 0.56. 
and a standard deviation of 0 0.03. So they're considering changing the mean and standard deviation. Remember, in the beginning, we were told that it was 0 0.6 and standard deviation of 0 0.04. They're considering changing it. Would you recommend that the manufacturing company use this original programming of the filling machine or the adjusted programming of the filling machine? Provide statistical justification of your choice. Now remember, they're very concerned about underfilled bottles. That's what they're concerned with. Earlier, we found the probability that the amount in the shampoo is less than 0.5 liters to be 0 0.0062. To be honest, that's pretty unlikely. And in the previous problem, we calculated that having the entire, the entire crate rejected is extremely unlikely, right? Having two or more underfilled bottles had a probability of 0 0.00167. So very unlikely. So how would that work if we changed it to these new adjusted means and deviation? Well, let's continue to focus on underfilled bottles. Under these new parameters, what's the probability that the amount is less than 0 0.5? Well, once again, I got to get the z-score for 0 0.5. This time I'm going to subtract 0 0.56 divided by the standard deviation. So grab a calculator, 0 0.5 minus 0 0.56 divided by 0 0.04 is negative 1.5. And uh, because my calculator doesn't understand 0 0.5 liters, it does understand z-scores. So we're going to look at a z-score less than negative 1.5. So once again, to do that, I'm going to grab uh, normal CDF on my calculator. I'm going to go below. So I'm going to start at negative 99, negative 1.5. This is going to find the probability that we are below that, and we get 0 0.0668. So, with these new adjusted parameters, you are much more likely to get an underfilled bottle. The probability of getting a bottle underfilled is about 6.7%. That is way more likely than over here when the probability was 0.62%. So again, what do you think they should do? Well, I think they should go with their original requirements. It's way less likely to get an underfilled bottle. If they make these changes that they're planning on doing, they're going to increase the probability that a bottle is underfilled, and that's going to be a bad thing. So here is all of that just nice and typed up. And did I have a mistake there? Let's see here. Uh... Uh, yeah, I did have a mistake in my work. Let me see here. Yes, I just realized I did have a mistake in my work. I'm very sorry. This was 0.03. I typed into my calculator wrong. I should have shown my work. 0.5 minus 0.56 divided by 0.03 is a z-score of negative 2. Z-score of negative 2. I'm still going to have the, uh, the same sounding answer. I'm, I'm sorry about that. So normal CDF, I'm going to go from negative 99 to negative 2, and I get a probability of 0 0.0228. Okay, so slightly different answer. I apologize, 0 0.0228, but my final conclusion does stand. It's still more likely, right? If we stay with the original plans, the original parameters, I'm still less likely to have an underfilled bottle. Here is all of that way better typed up and cleaner. And there we do see the probability that I got, the 0 0.00228. So because the probability of an underfilled bottle is greater for the adjusted programming, this would result in more rejected shipments. The company should continue with the original machine programming. Make sure you have a nice written sentence, especially when it does say to conclude, make a conclusion. We don't want to just end with two probabilities because that doesn't tell the grader anything. We want to tell the grader what we just found out, and that is that if we go with the new adjusted parameters, we're going to have a much higher chance of underfilled bottles, which is a bad thing. So we actually want to stick with the original parameters of the machine. All right. Pretty good problem, um, not too bad overall. A lot of kids do struggle with the binomial model, so hopefully you understand that certain part of it. But a lot of this problem is also very easy, I hope so.